Hello and welcome back to this series on Streamlit. In this video, we're going to be picking up with where we left off in the last video, where we saw how to do th different layouts in Streamlit and in Python. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the newer features of Streamlit that is vital to understand if you want to have a good, properly working app. It is probably the most important feature that uh, they've come out with, in my opinion. It's also just as useful, in my opinion, as caching models. I'm going to talk about that in another video, probably the next one. In this video, though, we're going to be talking about forms. In order to understand why forms are so important, it's important to kind of see why certain things are problematic in Streamlit without them. So let's go ahead and import Streamlit as ST. And if you notice, I already have it up and running, the app on the right-hand side. In case you've forgotten, simply open up the directory and type in the command streamlet run and then the app name, so something.py. Now, what we also are going to be doing in this video is we're going to do some really rudimentary NLP, or natural language processing. That's going to be the, the premise of this app. We want this app to have a, a text box that a user can copy and paste th things into, and then a few options where they can kind of select the entities that they want extracted from that text, be it a person, an organization, or a or a GPE, a geopolitical entity. So to do that, we're gonna work with Spacey. Now, I'm not gonna explain Spacey or NLP. If you don't know anything about it, don't worry. I'm not covering that in this video. I'm using NLP here because of one very important thing. We can load up a somewhat computationally expensive machine learning model to kind of demonstrate my point. And I'll be demonstrating two things in the, in, at once, kind of while demonstrating this video today. And that's gonna be that A, it's expensive to constantly reload models, and for that you need to learn how to cache them. We'll deal with that next. Uh, but the other thing is, is you're gonna learn about uh, how Streamlit kind of works in the sense that it's constantly rerunning your script. And this is where you're gonna see the form kind of shine. So let's do spacey.load and we're gonna say ncoreweblg. This is about a 780 megabyte machine learning model from Spacey for the, uh, for the English language. And then we're gonna make a function. And this function, if you're familiar with Python, shouldn't be too out of the ordinary. We're going to um, extract entities. That's gonna be our function's name. And we're going to pass one argument, which is going to be int types. This is going to be the, the type of entities that we want to extract with our spacey model. So what we're going to say is um, uh, text is going to be, let's just say that we want to actually pass one other thing. That's going to be the text itself. Uh, we're going to say uh, doc is equal to NLP text. And then we're going to say for int and doc.int. So we're going to iterate over the entities that this machine learning model is finding. And we're going to say if int.label, so if the label corresponds to a specific thing in our int types, then what we want to do is we want to say results.append. And we want to append two things, the int dot text so the uh, the label or at uh, the the actual string and end dot label again if you don't know what's happening here it's perfectly fine I'm not going to be covering NLP in this video this is simply to get a really kind of simple function up and running uh, basically all this function is going to do is it's going to look over a text that we that we give it the machine learning model is going to look at it find look at all the entities that it's found and return for us from this function uh, the all the entities and their corresponding labels. So if it's a person, it'll give you a person, etc. So what we need to do now is kind of load up something on the main area. So we're going to say st title. We're going to call this our uh, lesson 01. I think we're on 03 now. Uh, forms in Streamlit. That's going to be our title. Now notice what's happening here. It's taking a little longer to run. This is because I am having to load up a 780 megabyte model each time. In the next video, we're going to see why you need to learn how to cache things so that you don't have to load them each time it runs. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a sidebar. And we're going to say st.sidebar. Uh, uh, let's call it a, have a header. We're going to call this um, parameters, params. And we're going to save that. And then underneath the sidebar, we're going to have a multi select. Uh, a multi-select feature. So we're going to have int types is equal to st.sidebar.multiselect and this is going to be where we can select the entities you want to extract. 
And we're going to provide a list of entities that the user can extract, such as person, org for organization, and GPE for geopolitical entity. Now we need to come up with a very simple sample text area. We're going to drop this sample text area in the, the main area of the app. So we're going to drop that into uh, this area right here. And so we're going to say st. Uh, let's say text area. We're going to call this uh, sample uh, text sample text. We need to make this into an object that we can run into our function. And then we're going to load in some just a very simple sample text automatically as a default. We're going to say James enjoys playing basketball in Florida for the um, uh, Salvation Army. So we've got a, a sample text that's got a person, a place, a GPE, and we've got an organization. So let's go ahead now and see if we can call this function with this piece, these pieces of information that we have. So we can say hits are going to be equal to, um, what's the function called again? Extract entities. And we're going to pass in our int types that we've created here, which we've gathered from this output option right here. And the text is going to be the sample text that is preloaded. Now the user will be able to in this app adjust whatever's in this sample text right here. But let's go ahead and now do st.write hits. So let's rerun this app and now what we've got is we have an app that where the user can have some parameters and you might already be seeing the problem with what's happening right now because Streamlit consistently reruns whenever a user engages with an app. It means that everything in the entire script is going to rerun, even though I, as the user, haven't finished inputting my data. Imagine if I had a lot of parameters, not just one, but maybe five or six that I needed to pass to a function. This would mean that every single time I just changed one little thing in this, it would rerun everything. Fortunately, in the last few versions of Streamlit, uh, they've introduced a new feature called Forms which allows for the user to change things within a form that does not affect uh, or does not run the script until after a specific button is pressed. So that's what we're going to cover in this video now, how to create forms so that a user can input multiple things and not rerun the whole script until a button is pressed. And I know what you're probably thinking, can I just have a button that says something like this? Let's say if button uh, one, uh, sorry, if um, st.sidebar button uh, click me, if that's pressed, then just then run it. That, that should solve the problem. That's, that's a nice solution, but unfortunately it doesn't change the main issue. Even if you're waiting for a button to be pressed before executing this, this function, you are still going to find that it's going to be rerunning every time until you click that button. And so even though you're waiting to actually execute this function, Streamlit is continuously rerunning the entire script even when you make a single change. So let's now fix this. How would we change this to have it work better in a form? The answer is not as difficult as you might think. The trick is to wrap all of this code here, all of these aspects into one overarching a widget, if you will, like a container. So this is going to be equal to form, or sorry, we're going to call this form one, and that's going to be equal to st.sidebar, because we're in the sidebar area, dot form. And we're going to ha have a key equal to just something kind of unique. We're going to call this uh, options. Why not? Now let's go ahead and save that and see what happens. We're going to see something that looks not, maybe not necessarily different, but actually it is all different in the world. If you notice, nothing has actually changed here. However, now that we've got a container, we can adjust our uh, information here just a little bit. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we change that to this. We put that header inside of form one. Now you're going to see things change just a little bit. Now we've got 
this right here. And you notice we have an error, that's okay, we're gonna fix that. We have this little gray line going around this box. This is an indicator of a form in Streamlit. Now, every form needs to have a submit button. That's the whole point around them, and you see here it even tells you how to fix the problem. We're, we're gonna address that in just a second. Let's go ahead and continue putting things within our form though. We're gonna keep on seeing this error until we add a button to it, but let's go ahead and now see what happens when we wrap this item, the multi-select box in our form. We're going to now see that our options are in here. Now pay very close attention. As I add person, notice that you're not seeing the running up here in the top right. You're not seeing that because everything that happens within the form is not going to rerun the entire script. So let's go ahead now and add this click me button into the form. So we're going to add it right here. I'm going to erase this. We're going to back this up and we're going to have use this command right here, form submit button. So we're going to say form one dot form submit button. We're going to get rid of that colon there. Now let's save that, rerun. And now we've got something loaded in this form. It has a button. It's got things that we can select now. Notice how much more quickly these parameters are allowing me to, to navigate through because it's not having to rerun this whole script every time. It's not going to rerun the whole script until I execute the click me. And now notice it's frozen a little bit. That's because it's going in loading that model. And now it's running all at the same time. This was a new feature that was added fairly recently and it really changes how we allow users to input multiple parameters into an app. This is a feature that you really need to become familiar with out of the gate. It'll make your life a lot easier going forward as you make more robust and more sophisticated apps. That's gonna be it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna address the other major problem in this video, which is the fact that we are always having to reload this spacey model. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to properly cache a machine learning model or anything that is really large, such as a large data set in Streamlit so that you don't have to reload it with every time that you re-execute the script. That's going to be it for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting us via Patreon.